Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the virtual tech conference for the My name is Parikh Khan, and I am the moderator of today's session. I would assist you with any logistic resources you may have. You could use this seeking color option to seek help. Just change it to red, and I will reach out to you for assistance. Also, make sure to keep your microphones on mute. If you have any questions, you could post it on the QA panel. I'm monitoring the QA panel and would have the speaker responding to it as and when possible. So, we can do a quick poll now and check if the audio is working on your end or not able to hear the audio, please keep the voice and video from live meeting menu and click join audio. Once your audio is ok, you should be able to see the speaker button on You can see the icons on the menu bar. Check if the volume icon is Type it here and click ask it, then click the ask button. If you want to watch it full screen, which we recommend to you. Just press the key F5, minimum resolution for the one you are looking for, and 760. session, MVP Prabhat Nigam, who is an expert on Exchange Server, to take you through the session Exchange 2013 Transport. It is our way of saying thank you to the exceptional community who share their passion, technical expertise, and their knowledge of Microsoft products with other in the community. I am sure you will enjoy the session. So let me not take more time and hand over the session to our today's speaker. Thank you, Prabhat Nigam. Over to you. All right. Thank you, Tadit. Thank you. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. And thank you everyone for joining me for my session on Exchange 2013 Transport Architecture and Mail Delivery. Myself, Prabhat Nigam. I am a Microsoft Most Valuable Professional for Exchange Server. I write my blog at msexchangeguru.com. I'm a Microsoft Certified Solution Expert for Exchange 2013. I'm a MCITP for Exchange 2010 and 2007. I have worked for Microsoft Exchange Server PSS Support Group for a couple of years. <coughs> and currently I work on consulting in Exchange and Active Directory projects. Alright. Let's move on to the agenda of the hour. New transport architecture, transport services and ports, 
mail delivery receive header transport connectors transport high availability shadow redundancy safety net shadow redundancy workflow high tra sorry transport high availability workflow routing or these um, these are our ad agenda of the day let's move on to the first topic new transport architecture so as you can see there are um, three uh, uh, three transport services are showing up in this screen the first is front-end transport service the client access server uh, has uh, this front-end transport service so client access server can send and receive emails from internet using front-end transport service which resides on client access um, server front-end transport service does AD lookup for closest healthy mailbox server to connect with transport service so remember it was first it was front-end transport service look for healthy mailbox transport server to connect with this transport service so that it can hand over the message to uh, to the mailbox server to the transport service uh, without I mean it, it does not check any, any number type location and message recipients so basically front-end uh, transport service only proxy the incoming and outgoing mails front-end transport service also runs the connection filtering now move on to the next service that is transport service which is on the mailbox server transport service is, uh, um, resides on mailbox server where SMTP receive accepts the email and does the categorization routing send emails um, point to note that store driver has moved out of transport service now you can see the store driver is in the next service which will discuss in a couple of minutes transport service can deliver the message to an to any other mailbox server or it can send the email out um, to internet or it can receive the email from the internet so if you can see the main and important the most important service here is the transport service the next uh, important service here is the mailbox transport mailbox transport service so this is the third transport service in the suit of um, transport architecture on the mailbox server we also have the uh, we can say it's this this service also exists on the mailbox server which receives the receives the message on SMTP receive under the mailbox transport delivery service then it delivers the message to mail mailbox database similarly mailbox transport submission service under transport service picks the message from outbox and then selects any mailbox servers transport service which is the closest within the AD site so remember it does not require to select its local transport service so mailbox transport service can hand over the message to any other service transport service as well whichever it finds healthy and responding immediately it will hand it over to that servers transport service basically mailbox transport service also proxies then email the mailbox transport service on the mailbox server is broker between the transport service and the mailbox databases the mailbox transfer service communicates directly with local database using RPC and with the transport service on local and remote mailbox servers using SMTP 
All right, let's move on to the next slide. Transport services and ports. So as you can see, uh, we have um, four services. So in the architecture, it looks like there are three services, but, but when you go to the server physically, you'll find there are four transport services, front end transport, transport, mailbox transport delivery, mailbox transport submission service. Let us understand more about the services and ports of Exchange 2013 transport. Front end transport service runs on all client access servers and acts as a stateless proxy for all inbound and outbound SMTP mail flow. The front end transport service doesn't inspect message content only communicates with transport service on a mailbox server and doesn't queue any messages locally. You can see there's no queue, nothing, it's, it's just bypassing, just proxying to the next um, level. It's just transferring, transferring the messages to the transport service. Front-end transport service receives emails from internet on port 25 and 587 and from mailbox server on port 717. You can see here on the right side of the top, um, top of the front-end transport service. You can see on the right side it's 717 down there. The message is coming from the mailbox server. And on the top, you can see it's port 25 and 587. Um, sorry if it's a little bit not clear, the numbers. All right, so front-end transport service also send outbound emails if send connector is configured to route outbound emails through the client access server. If client access and mailbox ser server roles are separate on different servers, then edge transport servers bypass client access server and communicates directly with transport service on the mailbox server. By the way, Exchange 2013 edge transport server is back in Exchange 2013 service pack 1. All right. Happy? Move on to the next service. It's transport service. This service runs on all mailbox servers it is identical to hub transport server role in previous um, it's identical to hub transport uh, server role in the previous versions of exchange except the store driver the transport service manages the queue for all smtp mail flow performs message categorization routing address rewriting message con content inspec inspection, journaling, write management, transport agents, DLP rules, transport rules, IRM policies. So most of the things uh, you can see, everything happens in the transport service here. Unlike previous versions of Exchange, the transport service never communicates directly to the mailbox databases. The transport service runs the malware agent which is enabled by default in the transport service on the mailbox server to help protect the organization from malware and other unwanted content. All default anti-spam agent run on transport service. By default anti-spam agents are disabled which can be um, which can be enabled by running install hyphen nt spam agents dot ps1 powershell script in the script folder the transport service routes messages between mailbox transport service and transport service and the front end service I'm sorry uh, so the transport service component basically routes the routes the email between the mailbox transport service and the front end transport service obviously it runs all the um, rules so it, it uh, you can say filters the mail 
and do the all the all the checks all the agents all the and then bypass or transfer to the front end or mailbox transport service transport service receives the message on port 25 and 465 when CAS and mailbox are on the same server transport service uses port 2525 to receive the mail from CAS or uh, I mean to receive the email from the external clients or our CAS or from any any other SMTP server port 465 receives the email which came on port 587 on for front end on front end transport service on the CAS server port 465 also receives the email from mailbox transport submission service interesting all right let's move on to the next service mailbox transport service this service runs on all mailbox servers which is consists of two um, separate services the mailbox transport submission service and mailbox transport transport delivery service the mailbox transport delivery service receives SMTP message from transport service on the local server or on the on other mailbox server and connects to the local mailbox database using exchange remote procedure called RPC to deliver the message mailbox transport submission service connects to the local mailbox database using RPC to retrieve the messages and submits the message to uh, submit the message over SMTP to transport service on the local mailbox server or on the other mailbox server the mailbox transport submission service has access to the same routing topology information as the transport service because it is, it's the same server like the front-end transport service the mailbox transport service also doesn't queue any message locally so a mailbox transport service will be the local service where the mailbox exists or where you have active mailbox server uh, database so wh wherever your database is active on that server if you are sending email and you have a recipient on that server then mailbox transport service will receive that message and deliver to the database so it will not be remote service but it can be the transport service can be a remote service all right now let's talk about uh, uh, let's have another review of the ports uh, port number 25 is known as SMTP port which is used by both external SMTP servers to send emails to the front-end transport and, and also from um, uh, front-end uh, transport to the transport service unless that together front-end uh, transport or transport service use port to send outbound emails as well so um, Basically, port 25 is used by both services, front-end transport service and the transport service when CAS and mailbox server roles are separately configured. Port 587. Um, I'm sorry, I'll talk about port 2525 first. Port 2525 comes into the picture if we have CAS and mailbox server role are together on the same server then the transport service will listen on port 2525 for all incoming emails in place of port 
25. This is this is uh, because of simple reason the two services cannot run on uh, same port. So when you install both the roles together, it becomes like two um, two SMTP components installed on the same server, which cannot run on the same port. So that's why we it, it uses port 2525. All right, port 587. This port is used for the client connection, pop, IMAP, which receives the email on, on the client access server, front end transport service. All right. Port 717 is used for outbound proxies connections from transport service to front end transport service. When you create a send connector, you have an option to send mail destined to the internet directly from transport service or to um, relay through the front-end transport service. If you relay through front-end transport service, then front-end transport service receives the email on port 717 from transport service. All right. Port 465 is used to accept proxied connections that were received on port 587 by the front end transport service for clients connection. Transport service also receives the message from transport submission service on port 465. Port 475. The mailbox transport delivery service listen on this port for connection either from transport service send um, send or SMTP from the transport service on the other mailbox server that needs to send mail to users on their server. All right, let's move on to the next slide. Mail delivery. I'm going to talk about three um, scenarios here, three mail flow scenarios. Um, the first scenario is when an internet user send an email to an organization mailbox. So if you receive, if you are receiving an internet email from uh, to, to your mailbox in your organization, then how will it happen let's review so on the first scenario the email will connect from the internet to our spam guard this can be your ad server or EOP or any other spam guard Barracuda or um, there are so many uh, any spam guard it delivers spam guard scans and then forwards the email to front-end transport service on port 25 then front-end transport service look for the mailbox server in the same AD site. Um, the preference is the closest transport, uh, closest mailbox server, and um, the healthiest uh, mailbox server. Then it transfer. Then in front-end transport service transfers the email on port 25. If the CAS and mailbox are on the separate server, if they are together. It transfers on port 2525 then transport service does the filtering uh, run all the agent transport rules transport agents um, DLP policy everything and then transport to transfer to mailbox transport delivery service on port 475 mailbox transport delivery service transfers to the store where the mailbox is. So remember, mailbox transport service will be local to the store. So transport service can take a decision on which server the mailbox transport service, uh, on which server the mailbox resides, and it has to transfer to the mailbox transport delivery service of that server. Let's take scenario two, the mail flow scenario two, where a mailbox 
from your organization is sending an email to the internet how the mail flows so from the store from the mailbox database the mail will go to the uh, mail will be picked by mailbox transport submission service then mailbox transport submission service will transfer will uh, forward the email to transport service on port 465 then transport service will either send it directly if the send connector is not configured to use client access server but uh, in this scenario I'm, I'm configuring so um, if we have client access server configured it will send it to front-end transport service on port 717 front-end transport service will send the email to the spam guard or directly to the internet all right let's take the mailbox uh, mail flow scenario 3 where one organizational organizational user is sending an email to the other organizational user all right so the store um, from the mailbox database the mail goes to the mailbox transmission submission service um, mailbox transmission mailbox transport submission service sends the email to transport service on any server uh, within your DAG or within your AD site on port 465 then this transport service transfers the mail to the mailbox transport delivery service on port 75 on the local um, for, for the local user local mailbox database all right and then mailbox transport delivery service transfers to the local database this this is all all three scenarios i hope this is going to clear your um, doubts about the mail flow how mail flow works in exchange 2013 i'm also going to going to talk about these new um, exchange verbs um, so there are a few um, new exchange verbs have added um, when front end transport service transfers an email to transport service it does X proxy X proxy from an X proxy to carries the info from where the message is coming this has all the info the all the IPs all the headers it forwards to the transport service and when transport service sends an email to front-end transport service, it uses X proxy two. Um, and it does it also carries the it also carries the header. Um, basically the IP or routable information. Alright. Um, two more two more verbs uh, has been added. When the transport service transfers the mail to mailbox transport, the the two um, verbs come into the play. That is X session perms and X message con uh, context. So X session perms carries all session parameters, and X message context uh, carries specific specific context of the message. All right. Let's look at a receive header. How will it look like? So, um, let's uh, you have to see from the lower end. So the first header which will come is like this first part here. Um, incoming mail on all all um, on all in one roll um, kind of a which can be which can be which it can be another scenario the message ID um, then the from address then the second header shows it's received from internet and the cast server name the domain.com the IP um, with which is configured for Microsoft's SMTP TLS and the version wire you can see the wire front-end transport 
and which date so it shows the which which version of exchange received it which server received it and uh, which service received it from internet and from which IP of the internet sent sends it then the third header information is um, it's, it says that it received from client ex, client um, access server um, which, is, which is the same server from and to received by the mailbox role server all right and the fourth header to show shows that it, it's received by mailbox transport service so uh, you can see what all we have here is the exchange version 15.0.775.38 uh, which seems the cumulative update 3 here um, which service receives it and uh, so which server received it so it's all it's all it's all new header um, uh, new different header for exchange 2013 all right transport connector wow so when you install the exchange 2013 for the first time were you surprised to see so many connector well I did so uh, then I then I went through and check out all the connectors so um, let's talk about connectors there are five receive connectors which gets created by default and I would recommend do not delete any default connector because that can cause some problem and every connector has a purpose here you can see I've explained the architecture in the as per the architecture you can understand that every port and every connector has a purpose all right we need to create a send connector to send emails outside organization it does not come created this is the organization level connector which can add mailbox role server in the source servers unless we check the checkbox proxy through client access server you can see on the screenshot I have taken um, from a send connector if you check this checkbox you can add the client access server in the source server of the send connector all right and uh, if you check the checkbox mailbox server will forward the email to the client access server on outbound proxy front end connector this connector operates on port 717 now we will see three receive connectors on the client access server and two on the mailbox server three client access, client access server connectors are default front end listen on port um, default front end connector receive connector which listens on the port 25 and receives email from internet uh, um, internet or external SMTP servers then we have client front end 587 which receives the email from pop or IMAP clients except secure connection with the TLS All right. we already discussed about the outbound proxy front end server which is which is being used for send connector to send the emails out through the client access server then we will see two receive connectors in the mailbox server the default receive connector listen on port 25 to receive the email from CAS or external SMTP this connector changes the port to port 2525 if CAS and mailbox server are on the same server this is the same situation if you if you look at your IIS and see okay the we have both the servers together and the IS has two websites created um, default website and the backend website so the default website will work on 443 so the cache will receive everything on 443 and forward it to the mailbox server 
if, the, if there's a requirement on port 444, right? So it is the same way the mail, mail may, uh, both the components, the HTTP, um, two websites cannot run on the same port, That's the same way SMTP, two SMTPs cannot run on the same port. So we have 25 and 2525 in case both are merged together. All right. Um, then the next connector is client proxy receive connector, which listens on port 465 and receive emails from client front and receive connector of the client access server. This connector also receives the outgoing emails from the mailbox mailbox transport service. All right. Let's move on to the next slide. So the next slide is transport high availability. The transport dumpster. Um, so we'll talk about the why, why, why do we need the transport high availability? Uh, because we already had the transport dumpster in the previous versions of Exchange. Transport dumpster is a great feature. Um, but in case of the hub transport, hub transport server crash, sorry, in case of the hub transport server crash, we lost the emails. And we, when we look around, we had DAG, we had CAS, we have mail flow um, in high availability, but the mail queue were not in the high availability, which uh, made Microsoft think and now we have the high availability of the transport queue as well. All right, so let's talk about new high availability feature in Exchange 2013. In Exchange 2013, um, we have new high availability, high, high availability, high availability feature, feature which works with DAG and non-DAG with DAG with in a DAG configuration DAG is the transport boundary of this uh, high availability in non DAG configuration the active directory site is a transport boundary of this um, transport high availability configuration we need minimum two, two servers to get the high availability uh, that's much obvious um, we have the site resiliency so site resiliency comes when it, it is on the DAG uh, it can it whenever it receives the uh, receives the email it immediately copies to the second site it does not go to the same same site server it copies to the second site to avoid any disaster of the primary site primary ad site all right so um so shadow copy will create in the different ad site um it's more reliable um, mistakenly I wrote more reliance it's more reliable because it has two copies and does not acknowledge um, until shadow copy is created so what well, listen yes it does not send an acknowledgement until it creates a set of shadow copy uh, in when we do the mail flow So new uh, transport high availability is time based. Default is two days, um, same as message expiration queue. New transport high availability automatically recovers the emails. And um, we have a new verb coming in the mail flow, which is X shadow, which means the shadow copy is doing the shadow copy. All right, let's move on to the next slide. Shadow redundancy and safety net. Very interesting. Um, so we, we all know shadow redundancy was in Exchange 2010 as well. So it is shadow redundancy is almost similar to Exchange 2010. Um, shadow redundancy sends acknowledgement only after making shadow copy. If shadow copy of a message is successfully created but SMTP session between the sending SM, sending SMTP server and the primary server times out 
the primary server accepts and processes the primary message. Yes, even if the session expires and we have created shadow copy, it's still your incoming mail will be delivered. The sending SMTP will re-deliver the uh, will re-deliver the unacknowledged message, but duplicate message detection will prevent Exchange Mailbox user from seeing the duplicate message. All right, this is another new feature. The duplication will be removed in this in the case of a um, in this in the case of a ti uh, session timeout and if uh, Exchange detects a duplicate message coming. Um, which which uh, may which may not work in case when we ex when we when we send an email outside the uh, boundary of the high availability. All right, um, shadow redundancy works both in in both DAG and non DAG. DAG is uh, DAG is another transport boundary, and then. No, for a non-DAG environment, it's a AD site is the AD site is the transport boundary. By default, server redundancy is enabled. Let's check something on the safety net. So the safety net, what is safety net? Safety net is a new uh, name of the transport dumpster. We all know transport dumpster. It was a great feature, but we have done some enhancement to the transport dumpster and given a name given a new name safety net because this guarantees the delivery of your uh, mail <coughs> I'm sorry um, safety net works for both DAG and non DAG same as the shadow redundancy, redundancy the uh, DAG boundary is uh, uh, DAG boundary is across the side and non DAG um, boundary is within the AD side um, all right. transport dumpster uh, okay so I'm sorry uh, okay so the queue the safety net creates the queues on the transport service all right Safety net provides redundancy by redelivering the message in case of the law in case of loss and loss in transition. Safety net is no longer a single point of failure. This introduces the concept of primary safety net and shadow safety net. If primary safety net is unavailable for more than 12 hours, resubmit request becomes shadow resubmit request and messages are redelivered from shadow safety net make sense in exchange 2013 the transport high availability is more than just a best effort for message redundancy exchange 2013 attempts to guarantee message redundancy safety net does not have any size limit but number of days is limit uh, is the limit which we can set by default is two days safety net is, is safety net is automated automated and uh, no manual effort required shadow um, one more thing one more important thing I'm saying is shadow redundancy should be enabled uh, enabled on this um, for the safety net to work so uh, they, I mean, shadow redundancy and safety net works together. So they, they so first the shadow redundancy comes into the picture, and then safety net comes from the comes into the picture. All right, let's move on to the next slide. All right, uh, this is the shadow redundancy mail flow. We will have a look here. Um, in the first first screen uh, first. Uh, image you can see uh, that it is showing the exchange verbs when you type the command ehlo uh, you can see the last verb is the x shadow which is the new verb, uh, verb added to the exchange 2013 um, so now we can see the workflow of the shadow redundancy the first thing is the external email sends a message to primary 2013 transport server in, in this case we are talking about the mailbox role server because these um, 
safety net shadow shadow redundancy are um, I mean works on shadow redundancy and safety net works on um, mailbox server on the transport service so here we go the first uh, external SMTP sends a message to primary exchange 2013 transport server then point number two you can see exchange 2013 transport service copy to shadow server so this on the, on the point number two you can see it is copying the message to the shadow ser shadow server and then the shadow ser server gives the acknowledgement that I have received the message and at the point number four you can see the primary server is sending the acknowledgement back to the external SMTP so you can see um, shadow redundancy does not allow does not uh, delays because basically I should say delays the acknowledgement of receiving the, the message and it does not give the acknowledgement until it makes a copy of the sh of the shadow message all right uh, let's move on to the next slide transport high availability workflow so uh, this is how transport high availability workflow works a message a, a mailbox server receives a message from any any SMTP server that's outside transport high availability boundary the transport high availability boundary is the is the DAG or the AD, AD site, Active Directory site. So it receives the message before acknowledging acknowledging acknowledge um, acknowledging receipt of the primary message. The primary mailbox server initiates initiates a new SMTP session to um, to a to a shadow mailbox server within the transport availability boundary and um, makes a shadow copy of the message. In DAG environments, a shadow copy server in a in a in a remote active directory site is preferred. All right, the primary server processes the primary message and delivers it to the user within the transport high availability boundary, or relays it to the next next hub. Primary server queues a discard status for shadow server that indicates the primary message was successfully delivered. The primary server moves the primary message into the local primary safety net. Now the shadow server periodically polls the primary server for discard status of the primary message. When shadow server determines determines the primary server successfully delivered the primary message or related to the next or related it to the next hop, the shadow server moves the shadow message into the local shadow safety net. The message is retained in the primary safety net and shadow safety net until the message expires. Remember, we talk about the number of days we configure. So, it will, if we if we have if you follow the default uh, message expiry configuration uh, on the safety net, it will remain for the two days. After two days, it will be removed from the safety net. Now we'll see um, we'll see we'll see an example in the next slide. So here's the example of the transport high availability um, uh, workflow. Um, all right, somehow um, the bullets it changed it changed to the bullet. I will uh, I'll share my copy. This looks better here. So um, you can see in the first step. The inbound email comes from external SMTP to mailbox 01 server. Then in the second step, right away, shadow redundancy duplicates email to mailbox 03 server and delays acknowledgement. In the step 3A, we can see, um, I mean, it's, uh, mailbox 01 is not waiting for the shadow copy. It's also, it's also processing the delivery. So you can see that in the step 3A, mailbox server delivers the email from transport service to mailbox transport service. <coughs> the mailbox transport service delivers to the local mailbox database. And in 3C, you can see mailbox 01 server queues 
discard status for mailbox 03 server for successful delivery and mailbox 01 server moves the email into the local primary safety net all right on the fourth step mailbox um, 03 server practically polls mailbox 01 server for discard status of the primary copy of the email and in the fifth step mailbox 03 determines mailbox 01 server su successfully delivered mailbox 03 server moves the shadow copy message into the local safety net all right let's move on to the next slide i hope this is very clear with this example routing the accident 2013 <coughs> have um, delivery groups which is a way to generalize mail routing to help improve efficiency and attempt to deliver a message as close to its destination as possible so in a so a delivery group could be the DAG the DAG mailbox delivery group connectors uh, connector source server in an AD site which can be the hub site the ad subscription remember the head subscription the, it, if it is subscribed to some mailbox uh, servers um, it will only send the email to those email servers not all mailbox servers so in that case that's a delivery group for ad subscription DL expansion server who, uh, who configures DL expansion server I will never recommend to configure it because this this uh, can cause um, the issues in case of the servers goes down or anything happened to the server or if you are patching the server server is restarting um, you know so I would never recommend to go for the DL expansion server delivery group all right um, <clears throat> routing does the mailbox transport uh, mailbox transport service to store delivery on the active mailbox database which is the final delivery and it prefers the local um, local mailbox server which is the, always the preference the local nearest uh, um, the mailbox tra transport service prefers uh, will, will be on the local mailbox server bifurcation the bifurcation of the message is the routing decision which tells at which level we have to create multiple copies of the email this is the point where a multi-user email needs to go to the different parts of the final delivery this can be within the delivery group and out of delivery group as well so at one point it decides okay now if you have if you have sent an email to 10 users um, which have um, which have some internet user some some outlook.com users some microsoft.com user and some of your organizational users so at the end of your at the last point of your uh, organization's transport um, delivery group it will bifurcate the messages and uh, to um, to different uh, um, re receive smtp servers all right then route calculation action 2013 um, routing calculation will look for minimum cost so the first first uh, option is the minimum cost so if there if there are two or more routes with same cost then it checks the hop and if there are two or more um, routes with same cost and same hop then it will go with the alphanumeric routing which will be the uh, name of the AD side in the alphanumeric um, alphanumeric sorting you can say all right let's move on to the next slide so this slide is talking about the connection filtering the connection filtering is um, is a, is a, is the anti-spam filtering which 
does not come with a uh, with the anti-spam script so by running by running the install anti-spam agent.ps1 you will not find connection filtering because connection filtering part of the client access server it's not it's not on the mailbox server so we need to follow these steps to um, create connection filtering so the steps are open exchange management shell as administrator run the below command this command is the main main command which is going to enable this agent then um, you need you should know what are the other agents running on the on the on the client access server prioritize this this agent as a first agent to receive because at the at the first point you want to configure accept or or deny for any connection based on the IP address then the next step is to configure um, configure um, IP blockless provider this is very useful uh, one of the org spam host org provide the IPs which you can block based on their analysis that which IP is a spam or any anyone reports any spam based on that they build a list and provides provides to every organization which subscribe in, in this way so you have to run this command add IP block list provider um, name um, name of the blacklist provider look up zone and if it matches um, enable it um, then enable the agent run the command enable transport agent and enable the connection filtering agent restart front-end transport service and that's it you are done with the connection filtering and you can en enable it all right all right so we, are, we have come to the end of the session and today's summary is we learned about transport architecture we learned about uh, mail flow we learned about transport high availability we learned about transport connectors and services we learned about transport ports all right um, this is this is about uh, me and my blog you can send me the feedback of my session on Prabhat at msexchangeguru.com my blog is msexchangeguru.com we also exist on most of the networking channels Twitter Facebook YouTube um, LinkedIn group so we have two LinkedIn groups Microsoft Microsoft Exchange Server and Microsoft Exchange Server 2013 I would encourage you to join there and uh, we always share the latest and greatest knowledge there and you can also um, ask any question you have um, here uh, or on, on our website or on the LinkedIn groups we are good in answering all right with this uh, last slide I would like to thank you and I would like to take your questions from here all right S spam guard will not bypass front-end transport service um, spam guard there are two ways spam guard can bypass or um, we can bypass client access service or we cannot so whichever way we want to configure we can configure spam guard to point to the client access server on port 25 and it will deliver to the client access server which which will be receiving on the front end service but if you want to bypass you can directly send to the mailbox transport service on port 25 um, on the mailbox server if you have both client access server and the mailbox server together you can configure your spam guard to forward the emails to the same uh, to the server IP and port 2525 and it will bypass the client client uh, access server front end service all right so thank you again
Tango 